So uh, welcome back, everyone. This is the start of my eighth year in Lynchburg City Schools. I have Willis Vandewerkers out there somewhere. I think this is like his 44th year in public education. Yeah, it was a short time ago when graduation was held on this stage, and from my perspective, the summers keep getting shorter and shorter. As we try to get all the work done to get ready for the start of school, and you guys are taking all those wonderful vacations to Europe and the beach and the lake, and all of those wonderful things that I see on Twitter that teachers share uh, to show the great times that they're having, uh, what happens every August is those kids come back whether we're ready for them or not. Uh, and getting ready for them is one of the biggest charges that we have, and today is the kickoff of that uh, last week. On Thursday, the building principals welcomed their new teachers back to Lynchburg City Schools. We're going to get to see them, all our new employees, later in the program. So we'd like to get started. If everybody would please rise for the presentation of the colors, the Pledge of Allegiance, and the singing of the national anthem. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order. Color. Order. Are you there? So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the So it's my pleasure to introduce our first speaker for this morning. It's our Mayor, Trené Tweedy. Please give her a warm round of applause. Okay. 
Good morning, Lynchburg City Schools. All right. I appreciate Superintendent Edwards and the school board for the invitation to me and my fellow council members and members of city staff to join you all this morning for your convocation. And I will ask at this moment if all of our city council members who are present would please stand. I see Council Member Nelson over to my left, <laughs> Council Member Wilder, Council Member Bo Wright, and Vice Mayor Mary Jane Dolan. Thank you. Hope I didn't miss anyone. Thank you. What an exciting time this is for you as you prepare for a new school year. As I look out among you, I feel a great sense of pride as I recognize that it surely takes a village of dedicated educators, administrators, and support staff ready and willing to provide the best education possible for our community's children. The task before you is an important one, but you cannot do it alone. All of us in this community, whether we have children in the public school system or not, have a role to play and should be working right along beside you in championing our children and supporting you. It is so easy to say that our children are our future, but our actions are what tell the story. Many of you may be aware that the school board and city council have recently appointed a task force steering committee with the mission of gathering information, engaging the public in conversation, conduct conducting thorough analysis, and forwarding actionable recommendations to the school board with the goal of aligning future educational programming, operational strategies, and capital improvement decisions of the Lynchburg City Schools and the long-term success of the city and community. The ultimate goal is to ensure that Lynchburg has the best school system, not only that it can, but in this state. Did, I, did you hear what I said? Okay. It can because we understand that this community has, can only be great if it has a great public education system. I hope that you will take advantage of any opportunities to participate in outreach efforts and be willing to share your thoughts and ideas. Before I take my seat, I want to encourage you never to lose your sense of enthusiasm and the excitement that I see in all of you and I feel in this room this morning. Every day will not be easy, and there may be times when you will wonder why you chose teaching. But be encouraged, there are so few pro professions that have the power to change lives. Many of you will be the only positive role model in a child's life or to help a child discover his or her passion. You will help open up the world of possibilities and opportunities, and if you are truly ready and willing, you will touch your students in ways you may never have dreamed possible. As noted educator Rita Pearson says, every child deserves a champion, an adult who will never give up on them, who understands the power of connection, and insists that they become the best that they can possibly be. Go out and be that champion. Be ready and willing, have a great year, and thank you for your service to this community and to our children. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Tweedy and City Council. It is a, a pleasure to have your support and have you here with us on this fantastic opening day. How are we doing out there? Uh, that was kind of lame. How are we doing out there? All right, okay. At this point, I'd like to introduce Ms. Susan Morrison, our school board chair and our school board. Hi, it is amazing to be standing up here again this year as a school board member and as the, cha as the chair of Lynchburg City Schools. I am even more proud to stand up here as a graduate of E.C. Glass High School. My husband is a graduate of E.C. Glass High School, and all three of our children went through Lynchburg City Schools. Thank you for what you've done in the past, what are you doing now, and what you will do in the future. The school board does so many things. We, uh, you know, we have board meetings, but we also have committee meetings like finance committee and policy committee. And I wanted each of the board members to introduce themselves to you so that you could learn a little bit about what we do during a week. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is James Coleman, and I serve as the Vice Chair of the Board. Both of my adult children are graduates of Heritage High School. My daughter is now going to be a rising freshman at Heritage, and my other daughter, a seventh grader at Sandusky Middle School. I also serve on the Legislative Advocacy Community Relations Committee, and I am a member of the board of the Virginia School Board Association, serving as the Southern Region Chair with 12 school divisions on the Executive Committee of the Virginia High School League, and also VSBA's representative on the Teacher of the Year Committee. Good morning, LCS. Are we ready and willing? Woohoo! I'm Sharon Carter, and I am one of the three members appointed to the Lynchburg City School Board from District 2. And I am a proud product of Lynchburg City Schools. Um, started at R.S. Payne, seven years there. Sandusky Middle School. Dunbar Middle, it was Dunbar High School then. And, and it's the second graduating class of the first Heritage High School. And I am the, on the Finance Committee and the Regional Committee of the Laurel School Board. So welcome. And all the uh, new school board members, new school, new teachers, Asia and all of the new teachers, and Tanisha and all the staff, and Danny and all the new principals. So I want to hear great things and be in the papers with great glowing comments. Thank you. Good morning, Lynchburg City Schools. My name is Bob Brennan. I'm in my third year in Lynchburg City School Board. I'm a member of the alter member of the Finance Committee and of the Legislative uh, Advocacy and Community Relations Committee. More importantly, I have four children who have struggled through their way through Lynchburg City Schools in the distant past, starting at Paul Monroe, then Lincoln Middle, then E.C. Glass. And I'm so pleased to see after all these years those buildings are still standing and they have survived that. I also have the honor of having two nieces who are, I'm the guardian for my wife and I, who are now at E.C. Glass and having a great experience there, so we're recycling through. Um, my main reason to be on Lynchburg City Schools is because I think Lynchburg City Schools is the most important entity in our community for our children and for our entire community. And I think that what all of the Lynchburg City employees do, teachers, bus drivers, administrators, is so important to our community that I just have to say that you are my champions, as Dr. Twitty has said, and also my heroes. Thanks so much for what you do. Good morning. Uh, I, my name is Atul Gupta, and I serve from District 3 on school board. And uh, my daughter went to R.S. Payne. Uh, where is R.S. Payne? And then she went to Dunbar. Uh, and then she went to college. <laughs> Skip high school. And I have another one. Uh, 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 and I have another one who attends the special education services in, uh, under Willis. I don't know where is Willis, uh, vendor worker. Yes, that's a special education program, excellent in the state. I know Mayor Treaty says, we want to be the best school system in Virginia. I'll say, we want to be best in terms of education and the salaries for our teachers. So, uh, I think she shares my sentiment, and that's what uh, I serve on the Finance Committee, and that is our goal, to slowly reduce that gap for our teachers. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Gary Harvey. I'm the freshman on the school board, so those teachers who are new this year, I get what you're, you're feeling right now. Um, I am a product of Sandusky Elementary School, <laughs> Sandusky Middle School, and Heritage High School. 
currently I have the honor of serving as a lunch buddy and a uh, member of Partners in Education with T.C. Miller Elementary School. And I'm looking to build other relationships with the rest of the schools here. Um, I am excited for this coming year and I was overwhelmed to see how many smiling faces there were here this morning. People that share that same interest in our community and more importantly in our children. And my hat's off to you this morning. You are inspiring and I wish you each and every one of you a happy and productive school year. And again, go out there and impact our youth and this community to make our future leaders of not only our community, but also of our nation. Thank you, each one of you. I hope you can tell from their comments that this board is really committed to being the best we can for you. When we look out into this audience, we see a village of champions. We see a village of caring people. And I want you to know that we're gonna do our best. We're gonna do the best we can for every single employee teachers, bus drivers, cafeteria workers, maintenance workers, all of you are so important, secretaries. You're all so important to the success of our students and we are committed to getting you the help that you need to be the best. Thank you and have a great year. So this year we're doing something different. In the past we've had a new teacher breakfast at um, the University of Lynchburg. Um, but this year we want to make sure that we take pause and celebrate our new teachers and our new staff. Um, so we are going to do a little bit different this year. We have a celebration uh, coming up to celebrate all of our staff because we really could not make this magic happen if it wasn't for each and every one of you. And I have this saying that says, let us check our titles at the door. And starting with me, superintendent title, put it at the door because you never know which person makes a difference in a child's life. It could be the custodian, it could be the librarian, it could be assistant, guidance counselor, bus driver, social worker. You just don't know, parent volunteer. So this year we are celebrating all of our new staff, all of our new employees. And to help me do that, I have the president of the LEA, Mr. Carl Luce, here to welcome you. Wow, that is, that's a great picture. All right. Uh, <laughs> So good morning to all of you and on behalf of the Lynchburg Education Association, welcome to the 2019-2020 school year. First, I want to thank Dr. Edwards and the LCS administration for letting me speak with you today. Um, second, let me give a quick shout out to my work family, the poets of Dunbar. Third, let me welcome all of the new employees who are joining us at Convocation for the very first time. Everyone, please make sure you stop by the LEA table outside and pick up an application. If you aren't already a member, every employee is eligible for membership, and we would love to have you be a part of one of the fastest growing associations in the Commonwealth. Also, I know it's a little early to think about lunch, but I want everybody to know if you're looking for a quick lunch because you have a lot of meetings today, I hear the lines at Arby's on Memorial are really short. So... saying. My, my name is Carl Luce and I am president of Lynchburg Education Association and like my lovely wife Maria I am starting my 29th year in Lynchburg City Schools. I promise to be brief as I know the principals and site managers have spent the last month preparing an amazing opening meeting for us based on some funny yet inspiring video they saw on Instagram in June so we don't want to be late for that. <laughs> Speaking of hilarious videos, like some of you, I had the opportunity to see Gary Brooks this past weekend when he visited the area. For those of you that don't know, Gary is a principal in Kentucky who rose to fame three years ago with a series of hysterical education-based videos. He's also a successful leader who turned his once struggling elementary school around. 
And while Gary talked on a variety of subjects during his two-hour presentation, the one topic that stuck with me was getting on the same page. There are 1,700 different people working in this division. They have different levels of experience. They have different life experiences. They have different likes and dislikes, different wants and needs, different challenges and frustrations. And yet, at the end of the day, we need all 1,700 people on the same page. We cannot work successfully in our own world, in our own bubble, and do what needs to be done. We need the bus drivers and aides to transport the kids safely to school. We need the cafeteria staff to have nutritious meals ready for those kids. We need the teachers and assistants to have a welcoming and safe learning environment ready and waiting. We need the custodians to maintain that environment. We need counselors and therapists to help deal with the issues that these kids bring with them to school each day. We need our librarians, our secretaries, our administrators, our SROs, our coaches, our IT people. We need all 1,700 of us. So how do you get 1,700 people with different jobs, different goals, different needs, all on the same page? Communication. We've got to communicate with one another. We've got to work together and say, these are the things we think are important. These are what we've got to make sure we do to have a successful year this year. And then we've got to stick together and do them. It cannot be me standing in front of my class saying, well, I know all the seventh grade teachers are doing this, but I'm going to do that. It's got to be me saying, our team got together, and this is what we decided was important for you, and we're all going to be doing that. And I see that some of you are really into communication, as I'm sure those of you scrolling on your phones right now are posting about how awesome and inspirational this speech is, hashtag inspired. Now, I'm not talking about us being robots. I'm not talking about you doing your job the exact same way as this person or that person. And I'm also not talking about meeting yourselves to death and writing it up as a PLC and scheduling it and inviting an administrator. I'm talking about informally checking with your colleagues and making sure you're paddling in the same direction. I'm talking about hearing a kid say, Mr. Potts won't count us late until it's five minutes after the bell rings. And then not going to your principal and complaining about Mr. Potts, not going to a colleague and complaining about Mr. Potts, but going to Mr. Potts and saying, hey, this is what the kids are saying, what's the deal? I'm talking about having those professional relationships where you can talk about things you need to talk about. What worked well, what didn't? What can we change or do differently? What can we work on together? Communication, that's going to be the key for us all this year. Because if all 1,700 of us with different jobs and different lives and different tasks can't get on the same page, can't work together effectively, how can we expect the more than 8,000 kids who will be walking through our doors next week to do it? Thank you again for the opportunity to speak to you today and for the honor of serving as your LEA president. Welcome once again to you all and have a great school year. And if I can be of any assistance to you, just communicate. Thank you. Thank you, Carl, that was wonderful. As many of you know, standing up here on Monday, looking out at all of you can be terrifying, can be scared. And truth be told, I'm an introvert. Most folks would be like, but you grab the mic and you start speaking. I'm scared, scared. And this weekend, before convocation, I do everything I can to, to get excited, pump myself up so that I'm ready for the day. And y'all know this weekend was very trying, was very, very trying. And I started it Saturday morning. I got to hang out at Dunbar with the all Dunbar reunion, which was fabulous. And thank you, Dunbar staff. But by the time I was leaving, I learned of the tragic events that were happening again. And then I put aside my speech and I was thoughtful and reflecting on those families. And later I picked it back up and started all over again. And then on Sunday I started to pick myself up again, got all peppy, and then again learned of more tragic news. 
twice in one weekend. And I thought it's very difficult to come back and be excited, happy during this time of tragedy. And for all those families and for all those victims, can we just have a moment of silence? Thank you. So what I thought about was during times like this, it's very important to say thank you and to be grateful and to be appreciative because you just never know if tomorrow is promised to you. So what I decided to do was take a moment. There were folks who were here during the summer working hard, working with our kids, working on our facilities, our transportation department, our volunteers. And I just wanna take a moment to say thank you to them. So, got your UFP yet? My what? Your Universal Fast Pass. It's the easiest way to get ready for enrollment day in August. How do I get one? Just complete the online registration application at our website and bring your two proofs of residency to any one of the UFP sites this summer. Then you bring your UFP Universal Fast Pass. That's right! You bring your UFP on enrollment day to bypass the lines and go straight to your child's classroom. UFP. Tell your friends. I just like watching Cindy Babb dunk on Mason. <laughs> At this time, I'm going to ask all of my new to LCS staff members, along with principals, to quietly line up uh, on the side hallway over here. We're going to try to do it as quietly as we can. We have a lot of folks. Is Marie G here? Where are you at, Marie? Marie hired all these folks. <laughs> okay, so while they're lining up, last year our theme was reinvest in LCS. Uh, and that meant a lot of things, including a very aggressive, and thank you school board, thank you city council, um, an aggressive strategy to get an average of a 5% salary increase for our staff, which is worth a clap. Yes, it is, because we hadn't had one. And thanks to the efforts of many people, we also raised our wages up to living wage, which was $11.28 an hour for all staff, minimum of $11.28 an hour. So I'd like to thank both the school board, I'd like to thank all of my team and city council for supporting us in those initiatives. It's always good to go back and reflect on what we've done and then at the conclusion of this we'll talk about our theme for this year. So we're going to take a look while they're lining up at the video for what does reinvest mean to you. Um, I think it means to take the time to get things and put them back in the community. You like get money, then like you spend it, but then when you get finished using them, 
and like you give them to the other school? Reinvest verb to spend money, time, energy, etc. to make improvements to something valuable. When I think about reinvesting and what that means to me and to Lynchburg City Schools as a district, I think about all of the faculty and staff who really pour themselves into the growth and development of our children in our schools. It is just an opportunity where I get to, as a teacher, invest in my community and work with my students. Um, and it is something where it is a constant, like, daily thing. It's not just a, at the beginning of the school year, at the end of the school year. It's something where I get to work day in and day out with each of my students, all 130 of them, and just truly pour into them. Reinvesting looks like uh, me as a teacher taking the time with my students, especially in civics class, to um, make sure that they understand uh, their value in society and in, in our community because uh, they won't be eighth graders forever. They will grow up and graduate high school and be a part of Lynchburg or wherever they end up at. That's what reinvesting into my students looks like, is seeing them uh, grow and mature as, as people. We have local businesses that will donate materials from time to time for projects that we work on here. That's a way for them to show their interest and belief in what we are trying to accomplish here. So uh, what reinvest really means to me is um, opportunity. It means opportunity to all the students in Lynchburg because they're really reinvesting into us so that we can be the future because we are the future. The biggest thing about reinvesting in LCS is that we'll get to see the fruit of what we have invested in the long run and that'll be when all those students get their diploma and are walking with their cap and gown across the stage and I get to congratulate them and just be so excited with them. So every good teacher knows that when you have a oops, you just tell on yourself and have an oops. So I must have had an oops because I forgot to mention one department this summer who not only was helping us, but they also held it down in the community and made sure folks got back and forth to their community places, and that is my transportation department. So shout out to the transportation department for getting our kids back and forth to LCS programs, Freedom School, all over the town nonstop. So at this time, I'd like to show you what we have reinvested in for the start of this school year, and that is our new staff. Now, this is the new to LCS staff, so new faces that have not been with us. Some of them are not so new faces who've moved into new positions, um, but I really wanna take a moment for all of us to show them what it's like to be part of our LCS family and what it means to be here and to be committed to our students. So I am going to bring them out by groups to the front. It's probably gonna make them really, really nervous that they have to come up and walk across the stage, but I think we can make them feel a tiny bit better if we clap and shout and welcome them as they join us here on stage. From Laurel, Fort Hill, Family Insight, Empowerment Academy, and the newly named Turning Point Academy. All right, next up, we'd like to welcome new staff from Bath, T.C. Miller, and Darrington. Don't forget to pose for your photo op. And joining us at Darrington, we have a new principal, Miss Kelly Bivens. From Hutchison, Sandusky, and Paul Monroe. Here we go. Here's the captain of Sandusky. And here's Donna with Paul Monroe. All right, so my Hutchison folks, come on out. There we go. 
and we're gonna go out of order. Who's out here? Uh, all right, Hutchison, working with our little babies. Thank you. And I see Mr. A back here with our transportation group, so I'm gonna ask him to come on out. Thank you, Perry Mom, for ushering out our transportation and maintenance and custodial group. That's teamwork for you. <laughs> Don't go away, my little panther. Come on back, because your crew is here. And they waiting for you, Miss Nelson and Perry Mom. And we're gonna keep it moving. I see Miss Anderson in Heritage Elementary. Next up, Miss Leah Gray in Lincoln Elementary. With new assistant principal Brian Hoffman joining the staff. Okay, not to be left out, Miss Kelly Baldwin and the staff from RS Payne. And next up. Miss Lisa Lee and Sheffield Elementary. And not to be undone, we have Miss Sherry Steele and Bedford Hills. And it's time to bring up our poets from Dunbar. Happy birthday! <laughs> Happy birthday! talk about a welcoming. All right, y'all know my middle schools are just a tiny bit competitive, just a tiny bit. So up next, Mr. Ron Prophet and Linkhorn Middle. new assistant principal Kathy Dills on the team. We have Mr. Matt Mason and Sandusky Middle School. Hey yo DJ, 
Cut the music. Spartans at ease. Roll call. Since you have presented yourselves well before Dr. Edwards and the LCS community, go back to your classrooms and log in the Infinite Campus. There's more work to be done. <laughs> Voice level three. I don't know what I've been told. I am your new principal. Sound off. Sound off. Sound off. One, two, three, four. Three, four, let's go Sandusky! Moving to high school. Leading our state football champions, Mr. Beatty in Heritage High School. Pioneers in the house, we are, we are, we are, have a great day in. All right, now this team was working hard this summer. Many of you were here to experience Tech Stravaganza, so let's give it up for Amy and the Tech team. the place that is hosting us today. None other than Dr. Garrett and E.C. Glass. Okay. So as you can see, we have a brand new big family with us and let's give them all a round of applause welcoming our new LCS family members. So if you see someone with a Hawaiian lay on, just tell them you love them and welcome to LCS. All right, we are at that point of our convocation where we are unveiling this year's theme. This year's theme. Last year was reinvest in LCS. We put that all over Twitter. And this year, oh, this year's theme is ready and willing. Ready and willing. Yep, we gonna get raw this year. That's what it's about, LCS Raw. Are we ready to do what it takes? Are you ready and willing? We're not gonna hashtag Raw though. So let me introduce you to ready and willing. Hello, ready. Hello, willing. What's your name? Bridget. Benji. Okay, Bridget and Benji, also known as Ready and Willing, are going to be my special guests who are going to help me talk about what it means to be ready and willing. So, Ready, do you have a favorite teacher? Yes. Who's your favorite teacher? Miss Anderson. Miss Anderson. What school do you go to? Darrington. Darrington. And Willing, do you have a favorite teacher or person? Uh, Mrs. Miss who? Miss Mariner. Miss Mariner. And you also go to Deerington. So now, can you tell me what makes that teacher so special? Um. <laughs> totally rehearsed. 
Um, she lets us do fun things on Fridays. <laughs> There it is, fun things on Fridays. And what about yours? She lets us go have field trips a lot. Lots of field trips, are we getting this? And if you could give advice, look out there, can you see all the staff? That's everybody that works for Lynchburg City Schools and they are about to get raw, ready and willing. So if you could tell them one important thing, because they're gonna be at your school starting in a couple weeks, what would you say to these teachers and staff members? You are amazing. <laughs> you are fun. Say that again. You are fun. You are fun. So can we give it up for Ready and Willing? Okay. Okay. So let's talk a little bit more about being ready and willing and raw. So you just met them. They will be coming out to join me in a little bit. But what does it really mean to be ready and willing? It means we have to think outside the box. And when we're thinking outside the box, sometimes it means that we have to do things a little differently, right? We might have to drop some old habits when we're thinking outside the box. We might have to look at some practices that we've done for years that are no longer working with the children in front of us that we have to change. We might have to work differently with our community partners who are there to help us. We might have to rethink our relationships with our parents by understanding where they're coming from what their experiences are. We might even have to look at our curriculum and say, does it meet what we need for today? Are we doing the best that we are, could do for our kids? So this year, while we're getting raw, sometimes when you get raw, it's uncomfortable because you have to change some practices. But that's okay, that's why we LCS family, we get raw together. So I'm asking, are you ready and willing to do what it takes for these two up here? Yeah. All right, thank you guys. Are you ready and willing to do it for the ones who are gonna come to your schools next in two weeks? Are you ready and you're willing to do it for them? I don't know, you don't sound like you're ready and willing. They're counting on us to do it. They are counting on us to do it. So, what's that mean for you? Like, all right, Dr. Edwards, what you talking about? What am I gonna have to do? I come every day, I set up my classroom, I drive the bus, and by the way, driving the bus is hard work. It's the only job where your back is to the kids all the time. So if you see a bus driver, please give him or her some love and a bus assistant. We need to be our kids' heroes. Our kids need heroes and superheroes. Our teachers are heroes. Our staff need to be a hero. You don't know which kid you might be influencing. You never know if your smile that day was the one that made a kid's day. So often we hear stories when kids write back to us and tell us some things like, do you remember that time in your classroom or on the field or at band practice when you? And half of us don't even remember those times, but guess who remembers? The kids do, the kids do. It's important to them. And again, going back to check your titles at the door, you don't need a title to be a superhero. You could be as small as this and be a child's superhero. You could be as important as probably one of the most important persons in the school here is Greta, the custodian here, head custodian here. And this is how important she is, because at seven o'clock when I got here and I parked my car in the strip and was unloading my stuff, and then Greta came in and she came out, she's like, no parking out here, right? No parking out here. 
She didn't care who I was. I was like, yes, ma'am, no parking out here, right? Because she cares about the students. She cares about the school. She cares about Lynchburg City Schools. When you go back to your offices and your classrooms, what do you care about? And how are you going to be that hero for a child? What are you going to do that's ready and willing to be someone's hero, even if you don't know you're being a hero? And that's probably the best hero of all when you don't know. You never know if your kindness to just say, hey, let me help you with that, made a difference in someone's life. One of the things that we want to do in Lynchburg City Schools is customer service. And those who were with me at our leadership conference know that we are working on our customer service, not only to the outside world, but to each other. How can we be that hero and support one another? And I think Mr. Luce talked about it too. How can we be more supportive of one another? So thank you, my heroes. So this work is tough. This is my 33rd year in education. And every year is different. Every year when I think, I got it, I have the answers to that problem, the problem changes, it morphs. And if you know like I know, this business requires that we have a toolbox that changes all the time. Because sometimes the tools that we have in our box that worked five years ago, 10 years ago, those tools are outdated. They don't work anymore. But the beauty of being in education is that we are a learning institution. Where better do people learn new ways than right here with us? So I challenge you as you're becoming ready and willing to evaluate your toolbox. Is your toolbox growing with you? Is your toolbox changing? Do you have new tools, reinvented tools, to deal with some of the things that are coming our way? Because the world is different and our kids are different. And we need to be different to respond to them. So we need to have some creative ways about looking at problems. So let's talk about some of those problems we have. You know the ones running through the hallways, they antsy pantsy, they don't know what to do, they can't sit still. Stop running, stop moving, slow down. That's one way to deal with the problem. Or we could do what T.C. Miller did. One of the things that T.C. Miller did was put in a sensory hallway. And if you haven't had a chance to get over there and check it out, Check it out, because there are things for the little ones to do while they're walking through the hallway. They can take a squat, they can walk, take some hops and things like that. But it's one way of thinking creatively outside the box, because we know they got ants in the pants in the hallway anyhow. So why not give them something to do and get some exercise out of it? So again, this is an example of being ready and willing to do what it takes for our students. Let's think about some of the other challenges we have. Do you ever see kids get off the bus in the morning and you already know? You already know. You're looking like, hmm, it's going to be that kind of day. It's going to be that kind of day. They're not, they not getting off the bus already. But what if we thought creatively and created M&M rooms for our kids? What if, where are my kids? What if, when we know that they're a little bit challenged and we know they're not ready to learn, what if we had a morning motivation room? And this might work for staff too, because some of y'all get out the cars too. Y'all look like the kids, not ready yet. But what if there was an opportunity for students to do some mindful activities? What if there was an opportunity for them to de-stress, especially on a Monday when we don't know what the weekend held? What if our kids had a place where they could get started right before the day got started? What if? <laughs> so those are another example of thinking outside of the box. And thank you, this must be Ann from Ready and Willing, so thank you. 
But think about the beauty of having, and I know a lot of our schools have calm down rooms, but a motivational room, because what are you telling the kids? You're saying you're important to me, your education is important to me, and it's important to start the day right. It is important to start the day right. So as you go back to your schools, your departments, your buildings, and you start thinking about what is it that we could do differently to show the kids that we are ready and willing, and how can we start the day right? Let's talk about this one here. This is national data, and it shouldn't shock you. If I pulled up our data, it might look similar. And I dug back and looked at some of the work that our own equity task force has been doing for the past 20 years, I think. It's been a while, a lot of equity work. And this challenge still exists. We still see an underrepresentation of people of color in gifted and talented honors and advanced classes. We still see it. We still have strategies for addressing it. But I'm going to tell y'all, access does not always lead to success. Access does not always lead to success. So just because you let a child in to a program, you open the door, doesn't mean that he or she is going to be successful. And we've done a lot of door opening. But sometimes that's not enough. So we have to be ready and willing to do some other things. Because some of these children have never been in an honors program. Some of these children have never been in a gifted program, AP program. And opening the door and inviting them in without the consideration of what other supports they may need is going to lead to failure. It's gonna to lead to failure or fear. So what can we do to not only open the door, but guarantee success? So we need to change our mindset. It shouldn't be about how many students we have and we can count in that classroom. It should be about how many students am I helping succeed in that classroom? And if I'm gonna help succeed, I might have to be ready and willing to do something different. And maybe that's cluster grouping. Maybe that's recruiting and selecting. Maybe it's boot camp before. Maybe it's a Saturday program to help kids so that they can be successful. But we have to think differently than just our scores, our cutoffs, and our minimum requirements. We actually have to look at our kids and say, I want this for you, and I'm willing to do what it takes so that you are successful. Someone did that for me. Someone invested in me beyond what I knew. Someone took the time to take extra time with me so that I could stand on the stage today so I know what it feels like when people go above and beyond. And many of you out there do this every single day. Every single day. But I'm telling you right now, our kids need more of it. They deserve more of it. If we're going to change this, it's not by looking at the cutoff for the SOL score. It's not. The only way to really change this is to look at the kids, look at our practices, and we're going to have to fill in the gaps because that's what's occurring here, fill in the gaps. When you have a child who's been used to being in an advanced, rigorous program, and they continue to be in an advanced, rigorous program, they have a skill set. When you have a child who hasn't had that experience, they may not have that skill set. And I was an AP chemistry teacher, and I worked with folks who said, and I quote, if they're in my class, they should already know how to do this. They should already know how to study. They should already know how to take notes. They should already know if they're in my class. And I said, but what if they don't? 
And this person said, that's not my problem. And I didn't say it, but I was thinking, you the problem. <laughs> right? That needs to be your problem if they don't. Because that's what we do. We teach. So if they don't have that skill set, how can we work outside the box? How can we be ready and willing to do something different to help them get those skill sets if they haven't had that exposure? So that's what I'm asking of my staff this year. I'm asking you to get raw with me. I'm asking you to be ready and willing. Mr. Luce talked a little bit about some of the challenges that our kids face. And we have social workers who work, I don't know, 24-7, feels like my social workers are working, psychologists, counselors, nurses, teachers, assistants, counsel, countless folks who are helping kids with their challenges, everything from poverty. And by the way, we have folks on the inside and outside helping us with that. We have Food for Thought, Weekend Backpack Programs, Feed Them in the Summer, all of those things. And we can't stop. We have to continue. Our children are too precious for us not to show up and be ready and willing to do what it takes. So that is our commitment to kids this year. And I'm going to constantly be asking you, are you ready to get raw? And you're probably sitting there like, OK, you the superintendent. You're going to challenge us. And then you're not in our classrooms. You're not on our buses. You certainly aren't serving in the cafeteria line. And we've heard where downtown folks say, this is what you need to do. But being ready and willing doesn't start with you. It starts with me. It starts at the top. It starts with what I'm willing to do. Looking at my city council and my school board, it starts with what they're willing to do what your building principles are willing to do. Because as leaders, we should practice what we preach and stop preaching. So, yeah, you can clap for that. <laughs> so what am I willing to do? <sighs> Woo, yeah, I'm scared of heights. So for those of you don't, that don't know, the Bank of the James and Humankind has this over, over the edge, where you just go over the edge of that very, very tall building. And I know some of the folks, raise your hand if you went over the edge before. A lot of you have done it. Uh-huh. So they're still here, so I'm OK. <laughs> so I volunteered to do it this year. So I will be going over the edge because it takes me out of my comfort zone. And sometimes being ready and willing is doing something outside your comfort zone and realizing it's okay, it's okay. So that's my first thing. The second thing that I'm going to do is you all have tickets, correct? Okay, hopefully everybody, if you got here on time, everybody has a ticket. And I'm gonna ask my friends ready and willing to come out here and help me. Here they come. Can you grab that basket and bring it closer here with all the tickets in it? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So some of y'all said, well, what's the ticket for? Is it a raise? And I said, nope, it's not a raise. Is it a car? Nope. But it is a prize. And it is my commitment to showcase ready and willing. And I'm going to ask my public information office this year to kind of follow me around as I demonstrate ready and willing. But I'm going to need your help. <sighs> so here's what I've committed. I'm going to pull, or they're going to pull for me, not yet, 10 tickets. Each ticket, each winner, and I'm asking the winners to come up here and join us, is going to get one hour of my time. And I made sure everybody got it, not just teachers, not just principals, custodian, bus drivers. So which, what can you do with the hour? No, I'm not coming to your house cleaning your house. Not that ready and willing. But 
if you are a classroom teacher, I will come to your classroom. Denise will work it out. Where's Denise? You're in here somewhere, my assistant. Here she is. Denise will work it out so that I come to your classroom and you get to tell me how you want me to be the best classroom assistant and help you with a class of your choice work with your students. That could be putting up your bulletin board, it could be doing a reading lesson, you could have me teach. It's gonna be a challenge, but it's up to you if you're a teacher, if you're an assistant. I am now your assistant. So you can introduce me as, this is the assistant to the assistant to help you with your work. If you are a bus driver or a bus assistant, nothing like a good ride along for the superintendent. So I will join you if that is what you'd like me to do, bus of your choice, to join you. If you work in an office, and if your office is like mine and you have that stack of stuff that you haven't gotten to, and you're like, superintendent's here today, she's gonna help me get to this stack. Or she's gonna help with some phone calls, or whatever it takes to be ready and willing. So that is my commitment to walk an hour in your shoes, whatever shoes you decide to share with me. And we will be doing this challenge throughout the year. So it doesn't have to be this week. It could be sometime during the middle, beginning or end of the school year that you claim your prize. And again, your prize is dictated by your position. So everybody got, should have a ticket no matter what your position is because I value all of my staff members and there's not one single job that you do that is not too important for me to do with you. So, are we ready? Got your tickets ready? All right, y'all gotta mix them up a little bit here. Mix them up, mix them up, mix them up, mix them up, mix them up. All right, my winners, come on down. All right, let's meet our winners. Just tell us who you are and what school you're from. Tara Dillon, Empowerment Academy. Right. Brandon Jackson, Perrymont Elementary. <laughs> Zach Guka, Four Hill Community School. Monica Tucker, Sandusky Middle. Linda Rakatusi Mello. <laughs> Haley Garvey Coles, Sandusky Elementary. Deanna Thompson, Dunbar Middle School, Spanish and ELL. Oh, no. <laughs> Mary Jo Krofka, Lincoln Elementary. Uh, Josh East, T.C. Miller. <laughs> what is, uh, did you actually win a ticket? <laughs> and who are you? <laughs> Ron Prophet, Lincoln Middle School. <laughs> All right. So my pledge to you is one hour of my time to come and join you and do whatever you'd like me to do to assist you in the work that you're doing with students and staff. Uh, and you're gonna call Ms. Denise and work that out. We have certificates. Where are my ready and willing folks? Here you go, ma'am. Can you make sure everybody gets one of those for me? <laughs> so that is going to kick off our ready and willing challenge starting with me your superintendent who is trying to demonstrate what ready and willingness looks like all the way down through the ranks of our division our LCS family um, please give these guys a round of applause And I'm sure they'll be taking bribes as well <laughs> to figure out what to do with me. And on behalf of all of us, we wish you a year of awesome. Have a great day.